Welcome back to the 2022 Tim Selinski U.S. Masters Disc Golf Championships. It's Grant Zellner and Jennifer Allen from Quad Cities. This PDGA major brought to you in part by our friends at Ace Run Pro as well as graphics from Gatekeeper Media. It's time for the second half of our opening round here. Jennifer, you're one of the members of this card. Yeah, we have a few others here that are, are if they can hold on, they're going to be on a, a new card. Christina Gold and Kimberly Gianni, uh, Jen, Jenny Umstead up there as well. So a lot of great players here. We're going to kick it off hole 10. We are, it's a par 3, 305 feet. It is drastically downhill between these trees and over this little valley here and then the basket is placed on the upslope of the other side so like most of the holes here that you have seen so far this is a treacherous green if you hit wrong you're going to get a roll if you can make Fun it clean roll. across yeah you may have a good look at getting a hole in one mm -hmm. yeah this is, this is definitely an ace run kind of hole because as long as you hit the gap, you're going to be watching that disc very, very closely. Right. Sarah able to slide up. Perfect placement to uh, run that putt inside bullseye, I believe, almost. Own threw this so hard. <laughs> wow. And it was, it was going off to hole 11's tee pad. And she hits it, you know, coming in at a sharp angle like she does and got an incredible roll all the way back up around to the front side of this basket. So some good luck there for Own. Courtney making it up there as well. There's I a magic window here. Yeah, I missed my line a little bit, but I think I made it most the way over there. I can't You're remember. I put down it from to that the ravine. Yeah, I put it from that creek a couple of times. It's one of those things. Yeah, there I am, way down there. <laughs> Cannot see anything. Stinging nettles. It's beautiful down there. Nice property <laughs> you do not want to be near. It's one of those holes, like, I felt like I never was outside maybe 15, 20 feet in practice. <laughs> and then right. you play a tournament, and you're like, how did I not ace this? How am I off the green? Like I mentioned uh, on the closing of our front nine, there's this little stretch. Um, they're very short holes mm -hmm. where you have some looks at, at some aces coming through and definitely you, holes you want to birdie. But man, if you miss your line, you're going to be lucky to save par on some of these. And with that little turbo putt, the card goes three for four on the birdies. I think the back nine here at Camden too, a little more scorable than the front nine. Yeah, I agree. That front nine, we are just, like I said, trying to not get a bogey. You know, pars are okay. Right. You're going to pick up hopefully a birdie here or there possibly. But, you know, a couple of those holes play very, very long, hard par threes. Shortest hole on the course here, 183 feet, a par three. Very, very narrow. Playing uphill. Uphill and then it, the basket is on a, another down slope. So very easy to go not only over this basket, but if you have any kind of turn left on the disc to the left, yeah. you're going to go down that cliff on the left side. Um, I think a lot of us kind of play this, you know, in your mind as kind of an upshot. You know, you picking the basket, lining that up as an upshot. You're going to see a lot of standstills, a lot of putters off the tee. Own going with her Firebird forehand that she is deadly with usually. Yep, just trying to spike it in there near the uh -huh. basket. Gets a good little soft roll, little flip of the disc right inside bullseye. Interesting the way the hole looks so different from these two angles. From behind the players, it looks mm -hmm. a little bit uphill. But when we flash over to the scene looking back from the basket, you can see how the hole slopes down as you approach the basket. 
Yeah, Courtney catching one of those first trees, but she's going to have a look. She's not off on the left, so that's good. Going to get up there, hopefully, to save her par. I tried to run that one in. <laughs> if my arm doesn't work, maybe my legs will, right? <laughs> Sarah, Sarah giving a good little bit as well. Unfortunately, you're going to see, like, if you have, like I said, any hyzer on any shot, including putts, it's going to quickly move left down the hill. Courtney saving her balance and mm -hmm. saving that par as well. Well done there, keeping away from that foot fault. Sarah, yeah, a little high out of the hand. Yeah, a little high, a little left, back uphill. And like I said, you know, this is one in, in practice, you're like, oh, ace run, ace run, ace run. And then you get here in the tournament and you're like, how did I just bogey that hole? It's 180. <laughs> <laughs> but it happened. I saw, you know, from twos to quickly a four mm -hmm. quite a few times this week. Hole played as the second easiest on the day relative to par, as you might expect, being just 183 feet long. But there is another hole on the course that played a little easier than that. And we'll get a chance to look at it coming up. Join the Ace Run Pros Patreon account. They bring us incredible footage. $3 a month. Become an, an Ace Runner. All right, hole 12. This is a par four, 400, or I'm sorry, this is a par three. We wished it was a par four. 440 <laughs> feet. You're going to go down this hill over another little, that same little ravine we keep crossing, and then drastically back uphill. So much elevation change on this course, as well as so many trees, so many little trees on this hole. So hitting the line off the tee is extremely difficult. We're trying to get, I would say, a great goal is two thirds of the way up the hill. But first we have to get through the trees and down the hill. That little area there, looking back from the basket, just on the other side of that tree stump, the optimal landing zone. There is some room if you highs are off to the left. There's actually another pin location down there that's not in use this week, but there is a bit of a, a gap and an open space down where that pin is, so not a horrible place to be. Yeah, this is one of those holes you can, you know, think you're in a, a great shot landing where approximately you were aiming, mm -hmm. but one foot off and you have no line at the basket. I believe Sarah made it most of the way across that creek. Nope, she's just on the other side. That might actually be a little bit easier than being all the way down in the creek. Creek is safe. There's only um, one property line that we have to stay away from. Other than that, everything is fair game. You're, you're just penalized enough if you miss your Ooh. line like I did there. Towards the end, that shoulder gets a, a little sore, <laughs> shot yep. after shot. And of course, like I said, it never fails. If I if it hurt and I miss my line, it puts me right back at a place where I'm having another turnover and it, they are just not fun. I snuck that one up there. I don't know how, um, but Courtney and I making, like you said, that left side gap that if you can hit the right angle, you can sneak through most of those trees. And a little bit of a backstop up there yep. um, behind the basket on this one. Yep, very, very steeply uphill. 
Sarah has a great opening for her forehand shot. Puts it right up there. Own in for the par. Own the only player in the field under par at this stage of her round. Looks like, Jen, you were right on that edge of whether or not you're going to turbo putt <laughs> yeah, or go with a more traditional swing. It's funny. Like, I don't ever practice that turbo, but I just love doing it in the bullseye. I get to throw it in nice and hard and and confident, and, and usually it doesn't take an ugly spit. So I, I right. like the, the little turbo, and it's fun, and so many people are loving it now. So now I kind of feel like I have to do it. <laughs> Becoming a trademark as yeah. we move on to the 13th. This a par four, just the second and last par four of the round, 640 feet. The first half to two thirds playing steeply downhill in one of the, if not one of the, oh. I guess the only open the space only, here on the course. The yeah. only open space. And then of course we turn almost 90 degrees and go right back into the woods to an elevated basket sitting on a mound very very challenging once you get to the green get a chance to air one out though right here yeah this is fun um to watch your disc that you i mean a lot of us own probably throwing a, a destroyer there but a lot of us choosing a fairway driver even though we're trying to throw this over 400 mm -hmm. feet it just if you get the right angle will glide so far you do have to be careful to not let that disc hyzer at all at the end um, if it does, you're going to find yourself adding another, you know, 100, 150 feet to this hole. I'm throwing a TL here, trying to get it out there and let the disc do all the work back to the right. Pretty shape there. Yeah, and that's about where you want to land to have the straightest approach in at the basket. If you push it a little too far, you have a hyzer line, but there's some trees that get in the way. And if you cut it off a little short, it makes for a, a pretty difficult line as well. A few little low branches kind of come in the way as you approach the basket. Courtney has a straight line, just a little bit longer, but sometimes right. that's easier to hit your lines really, you know, if you get a full throw in. So she makes it most of the way up there to the basket, just on that down slope. And like, you know, most of the holes on this course, if even if you're up close, you have to 100% commit to this putt. If you're going to run it, you you better better run it and be committed uh -huh. to, to making it. Because if you miss, you're going probably more than likely 15, 20 plus feet away. You're going to see that unfortunate roll and it's not going to be the last one of the of the week. That's for sure. Go in with a little AVR up there, catch a little bit of a branch and leave myself a little short. Get a roll that curls back pretty nicely, I would say. That was probably one of the favorable rolls here. So Courtney now from about circle's edge, putting up to the basket, elevated on the top of this mound. Courtney's such a strong putter. She's going for every one of these. Run back that beautiful birdie from Courtney. Solid, right in the heart, every time. Just such a strong putter. Back-to-back -back strong putters. Owens doesn't fly in there as strong as Courtney's. It's the wobbliest putt on tour, but yep. she is making it 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> it's so soft. Yeah, it's. I don't even know how she gets it to wobble like that. I've asked her about it before. She said it's not intentional, it's natural, and it's something that she didn't worry about fixing, per se, back when Absolutely she originally not. played. And why should she fix it? Yeah, it's going in. So does that huge par save. That could have easily been a run back as well. That was, I think, even a little bit longer than Courtney's birdie. Um, that was... Awesome save by Sarah. Yeah. 
I was Softly thankful. up and over. Yeah, I was thankful that made it. I thought I was going to see the same thing that Sarah did. Those uphill putts, it is hard to get that arm all the way up, so I felt like I left it a little short. <laughs> Jennifer, that's your first birdie since the opening hole. Well done. Thank you. It's about time, huh? We're hole number 14, <laughs> par three. This was my nemesis. I finally figured it out after four rounds, but this 269-foot hole is the weirdest, I think, line of the entire course. It looks like they had just cut it out. Um, I decided it's almost a placement shot to really kind of play this as par. I. I don't know how many birdies were, were made on the week, but I'm going to say very few. Um, Owen and I had the discussion that she basically the same thing by the end. She even came out really late. Now, that was absolutely perfect. Um, but we actually, um, she talked about coming back out and practicing this hole specifically again because it can really cost a lot of strokes. And she made that shot perfectly, but I think by round four, she decided this was a placement hole as well. So what you're trying to do, it's about, you can cut this hole in half, about a 120, 30 feet up in between um, those two trees in the middle of the fairway, kind of where that stump is, and then right. you have about that left to approach the basket. Any kick, though, it's usually not a good one down the hill to the left is extremely wooded and sloped and off to the right is a little more open and friendly this was my this is not what i want to do forehand is the absolute oh. worst for me right now that rolled exactly right back down to my feet and i can tell you it didn't feel good <laughs> oh. so trying to just get off the course at this point one of those things, you don't want to be a quitter, but is it smart to keep going? Who knows? Right. You know, whatever. You live once, right? <laughs> 22 years, I've only dropped out of one tournament, so I'm trying to keep that to one. Courtney, Courtney forced to go to the good, roller there. Yeah, she gets a good roll back to the open with her strong putting abilities. She's more than likely can save that par. I am just kind of laying that up because this green can get ugly as well. This one doesn't have the grass that most of them do, so the ground play is super fast. Courtney just a little right, but gets, I think, stopped by most of the rough there. You can tell this is kind of cut out new, so just off that little bullseye area, it's pretty rough and ugly. Yeah. Sarah awesome. and own awesome yeah. little birdies there too. That's two of the three total birdies on the day here at the 14th. Yeah. I bet there was way more bogeys than birdies. That's for sure. No doubt about it. And some doubles <laughs> and some doubles. The whole just uh, 269 one of feet. Them right but there. Playing, <laughs> yep. Playing a third of a stroke over par. And we see yeah, we Own now beginning to open up a little bit of a gap on the field, thanks to four bogeys to start this back nine. Paul Macbeth, what a shot in bounds. That is a smash. It just seems like he's willing his way to the top. <laughs> World champion. Yeah, you can't let the distances fool you out here. Under 300 doesn't mean it's easy. This one just over 300 at 305, par 3, hole number 15. You want to throw something slow, and I would say personally not stable because the slope of this green going drastically to the right um, is, is going to kind of pull that off a little bit. And we have a very close OB line, the, the second OB line of the 
course here that's right there on the left side. So anything too stable can find OB very quickly. I believe Own stayed safe on that. Right on pretty, the line there. Yeah, got lucky, kept it in. Sarah gets a high release, so that's going to finish off if she doesn't get a kick drastically over to the right heel. It's just going to fly down the slope of the green there. So you have to watch the height of your release as well as trying to hit the line there. Courtney's going to probably get a skip and hopefully gets a little kick to keep her back in bounds. I'm going little with skip. my rock. Yeah, I rock three and got a good little kick back to the middle. If you get far enough down this fairway, there is some room on the right to sort of bail out. It won't necessarily leave you with much of a putt, but you will be safe. Here's Courtney flirting with that OB line all the way down. Gets a nice little bit of ground play down toward the basket. Now here's Sarah showing you what I was just talking about. Should be an easy par save there for Sarah. And as you can tell, like, good bid, but, I mean, that could have kicked out of bounds. Oh, look at this. Hey, I needed that after that double bogey. <laughs> nice, fun downhill putt. This, I think, was my favorite hole in the course because I got it, I think, every round. Spoiler alert. Almost aced it. <laughs> uh, almost was able to get the ace on this one. The, I believe round three bounced off the cage. So fun little shot if you hit the gap. And it, I think that's, you know, what makes golf fun. You're rewarded if you hit your lines. And, and this entire course kind of plays that way. If you hit your line, you know, you're, you're rewarded. If not, whew, watch out. And we move on to the 16th, par three at 280 feet. This playing over one of those two main ravines that runs through the entirety of this course. And then back up the hill here on the far side. Basket placed on the hill, so very, very steep. Yeah, one of the ugly, another ugly green on this course. You have to really commit to everything on this shot. Mm -hmm. I personally feel like it plays so much longer than 280. I'm throwing a, a oh, road no runner. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah, throwing a road runner. So if you get the right height that will carry that ravine, you know, I guess playing like 280. But man, if you get the nose up, you're going to hyzer off or get a kick way to where you, it, it just feels so much longer on getting an ugly kick over there to the right side it's kind of 50 50 if you're going to have a line out over there same thing on the left you know anything off the fairway here is ugly and you can tell the gap is small and pick which line you want to try to hit this is a very difficult hole Courtney choosing the right side. Yeah, and man, she hit the line perfectly and just caught one tiny little branch. So now Sarah's still on the near side of at least a portion of the ravine. Yeah, and if she can shoot it straight across, she can maybe get there. So much in her way. And if you hit any of these branches... You may be up by the basket when you hit that branch, but you're more than likely going to go 80 feet back downhill. It's that drastic of a slope. Courtney just playing into the hillside below the basket. Now Own, we'll see what kind of a gap she has to play with over here. She's well off to the player's right, looking back yeah. up and to the left here. And thankfully she has a strong forehand. I feel like that's what really limited me personally on this course like if you missed your line or get an ugly kick a lot of the times to get out you really needed a forehand shot to, to get back up to the basket 
I found a great drive on this. Ooh. Unfortunately, uh, I played that right side on purpose, but didn't get it to hold on the chains like I wanted to. Courtney able to make a solid putt to save par. <laughs> Just look how steep that is as she walks yeah. up to get her her uh, disc out of the basket. As you can see, you um, notice most of us have caddies, and I don't know if how many women i don't think i saw any women with a cart <laughs> yep um, i was definitely using my grip bag with a caddy this week because this is just not a cart friendly course there's so much up and down um roots anything you name it like this this course is is kind of a, a workout definitely a walk in the woods keeping under par and we are going into hole 17 this is a ex pretty difficult par 3 as well 360 feet a lot of us kind of goal being trying to get past these two thick trees right there in the middle that is where their short placement is if you are able to sneak through either left or right side of those trees, you can hopefully get a good little skip up to the basket. It is reachable, and I know it was birdied, but you can also find some trouble on this hole as well. 3 Throwing it low and hard there. Yeah, wanting that disc to make it through that gap and hyzer a little bit. I think I got cut up on the very last tree. On throwing that destroyer out there, wanting the same thing, trying to hit the gap and hyzer back. You guys will be together over there on the right hand side. Sarah trying to flip something up here and get it to ride. Yeah, it didn't turn quite as much as she would have liked. I think we all literally landed almost on top of each other. Courtney wanting that to turn and not getting it to, but she punched quite a bit of the way through so she has just maybe a third left to get to the basket or less maybe about 80 feet out Sarah Holcomb we've seen her do that before back to the target and just sort of flipping a little Annie around the corner you see the basket of eight over there I believe that Courtney was by you don't really come across a lot of the baskets, but these holes really play very close together. There's a few times you see the other cards, um, but it's so heavily wooded that they can really parallel a lot of these holes. Right. Good putt from Owned. Save her par. Just trying to get off the course and stay under. Little par save there for Sarah, just trying to maintain contact with Own. So lots of little sticks and stuff and roots on the ground. So not always, but occasionally you kind of wanted to to double check your footing. It kind of felt funny occasionally putting your foot down some of these holes. Everybody else putting out here at the 17th, a hole that gave up zero birdies on day number one to any member of the FP40 field. So the entire card by taking par, doing well to maintain he's way out positions. of position. Like, he's gonna have to force it though. I don't think he can. I think it's that even is, possible. It's in the impossible range. The way Worlds ended last year, you couldn't have wrote that in a book. After the initial reaction, I had to like process. If you don't even think it's a sport, watching this moment has to get you pumped up. He's right. gonna need the shot of the century. It just, I could sense something was about to happen. And 
we're finally through to the 18th a par 3 at 280 feet this whole plane along the bottom of one of the two ravines we've mentioned so often during the course of this coverage it is not out of bounds players will be playing their shots from down in that creek bed if they happen to go there the basket placed up here on the right hand side once again a side hill lie on stairs let's go ahead and throw that on 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 <laughs> yeah. stairs on so the you stairs have to, have to be careful to uh, how and where your disc lands on that putt um and to kind of give a, a little bit better understanding of this ravine there is a rope that you can hold yep. on to <laughs> to get you down and back up it is that steep and that fast you can see there mm -hmm. if the way your disc hits the ground on this hole is so critical as well as if you get any kind of kick sarah lands perfectly kind of hits that tree and stays right there and anywhere i think even either side of that little hill you see there in the middle you know is a good place to be up on top of it you have a straight across putt um, yep that's which, true what, what you don't want is to hyzer right down there that is it is ugly and muddy it's kind of quicksand in this ravine and and we have some weather probably moving in this week and so it oh. can get ugly wow that was so close to going in awesome run to try to finish out the day with a birdie for sarah this looks like drone footage of courtney <laughs> right it sure does you're seeing very clearly now how steep things are she definitely wow. used the rope swing to get down there having to play uh, up on a yeah, roller uh, angle gets that to settle shot mm -hmm. yeah overhand shot to get back up there own made it all the way down and i think back up onto the other side so she's not going to have quite the drastic incline as courtney had um she's she's back up on the opposite side of the ravine it's not pretty no um, it's going to be a difficult she, look yeah you can still see yeah she was still quite a ways down in there gets a pretty soft roll that was that was nice i kind of tried to give that a little bit of a run but to still land nicely cool camera angle there looking Bam. down at the basket and further down as courtney run it back what a huge par save now you see the uphill view way yeah. above the Just level of her feet and even her head dead center of the basket every time on her putt so solid You know, Owen is usually like the strongest putter on any, you know, card she plays at. And I feel like Courtney really gives her, you know, that push. Courtney is just as good a putter as Owen. We just don't see Courtney out as much anymore. She's been a, a strong FPO player for years. I remember when I first started, she was, you know, a player to always watch out for. She was going to be a strong competitor. Everybody else tapping out here on the 18th. And making our climb off the course. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank Steep you guys for joining out. us. This is how we ended up on three under for the day. Hokum two under, or two over, I'm sorry. And Courtney and I five over par for the rest of the field. Kimberly, yeah, Stephanie, Melody all playing their way into contention here for round number two, which we will have uh, some coverage coming your way of additional cards here at the 2022 Tim Selinski U.S. Disc Golf Championships. Make sure you like yeah. and subscribe.